Alright, okay. So, hello, dear. So, ayan. Wait lang. Nagbinhood ko while nag-record ko. Ano, teka lang. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay, wait. I think I can't move. But anyway, alright, okay. So, hello, dears. Diane, hello, hello. Okay, so welcome yet again to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. And for this lecture, what we're going to talk about is your scotch tape swab technique. Okay, um, I think this is an activity that you will also have in your public health um, laboratory. I'm not sure lang if it will be included. Um, in your curriculum or in your laboratory activities this semester. But um, in the previous semester when I handled um, public health, my first subject, <laughs> one of my first subjects uh, last uh, second sem of 2019, uh, 2020 na school year, I we had this activity in public health. So basically, it's just like hitting two birds. Uh, like you have two activities. Uh, you have one activity both in two subjects parang ganun. so <laughs> but more emphasis will be given on um parasitology because again this is an activity that is under parasitology because we're going to detect a parasite okay and uh for this activity what we are detecting is the enterobis vermicularis um especially its eggs okay um i'm sure you've heard about kigwa mga bisaya dyan. yes naman um i'm not sure if I personally experienced it before. I think wala naman, but I think siguro meron, but I cannot remember. How about you guys? Yes, drop in the comments below. Gimong <laughs> vlog. But anyway, yes, uh, have you experienced kigwa ba and all that? Um yeah, so that's what we are what that's what we are focusing. Uh, that's what we're going to focus in this lecture and that is uh Enterobis vermicularis or your kigwa. Okay? All right. And how do we detect it? It's through your scotch tape swab technique okay so again this is our method of lecturing lang okay this is quite a short very short uh not very short but a short uh lecture compared to our other lectures good uh, and i think it would not merit a uh, parang uh it's okay lang to lecture using loom okay uh in this uh topic it's really short lang so para na naman you know get to see me every time no, so, para po ma-miss ko ninyo. Charot! <laughs> okay, magpa-miss man eye. But anyway, alright, so again, this is your scotch tape swab technique. And these are your eggs of your um, enterobus vermicularis. Okay, so we'll look into that later. Okay, alright. Now, some short introduction. Your pinworm infection, also known as your enterobi enterobiasis, enterobiasis, and oxyuriasis. O, di ba? I hope na master na ang pagpronounce mo mga yun, Anna, guys, ha? Mga iasis. Naku, sinasabi ko talaga. They occur worldwide and they affect <laughs> all persons of all ages and socioeconomic levels. So, wala siyang pinipili. No, it doesn't choose anyone. It doesn't discriminate any um, victim or any patient. It can affect anyone. Okay? So, that's your pinworm infection. Again, entero enterobiasis or oxyuriasis. Ayan. So, again, mag-check lagi ko sa yung pronunciation ng mga iasis, no? Manghatakog points. Charot lang. Okay, alright. Anyway, alright. Now, because of its wide distribution, considered to be the widest distribution of all helminths, um, infection. It's considered to be the most common helminth infection worldwide. Nako press the buzzer. Your board exams, guys, usually, they like these questions most of the time. Kana mga most common, most harmful, um, basta mga most, most, most. Ayan, mga most diligent. Charot. <laughs> What's the Awards elementary, most diligent, most helpful, charot. Basta mga most <laughs> in the board exam usually. So, according to um some according to most of the sources, the most common helminth infection worldwide is enterobi enterobiasis or enterobis vermicularis uh, infection. Okay? But according to Belisario, which is one of our books in parasitology, which focuses on the para parasites in the Philippines, no? Uh, again, Lodi, Lodi cakes ng para na siya. Si Sir uh, Belisario, one of the best. And if not, very popular good in the field of parasitology, especially in the Philippines. Um, I think it's one of the books din na ginagamit ni Bernal, I think, yes. Because again, it's the parasitology. It focuses in the Philippines, okay? So, Lodi cakes na siya, Lodi cakes. Um, uh, Lods na siya ng para in the Philippines. Si Sir Belisario, yes. I got the chance to, to, saw, to see him during review. But I was not able to attend his class <laughs> because <laughs> I was so tired. <laughs> Sorry, review. Like there had multiple, there had been multiple chances of me attending his class, but I did not take any of it. <laughs> I did not take any of the chances. Cause I was like so tired, good guys. I didn't want to attend. So and mention malayo yung board, uh, yung boarding house. Uh, my my dorm was quite far from the review center, uh, to which the class was. Uh, uh, going to ho uh, was going to um, 
happen no so <laughs> medyo ayun tinamad ako but anyway I, I was able to see him naman so yes lodi cake sir belisario dami kong chika but anyway ang point lang is <laughs> according to belisario his book um the most common helmet infection in the philippines is ano what do you think Nine plus points sa maka ano ane maka guess char. It's ascaris, yes, ascaris rubricoides or ascariasis. It's the most common infection in the Philippines. Helmet infection in the Philippines. Um, well, that's actually put. That's actually quite um, understandable, din naman. Um, as I've mentioned to you, since you you were not you will not you you will not experience it this semester. Um, whenever you get samples, especially sa loog, as I've mentioned, diba? Because again, that's where we get samples when I was still a student. Um, <laughs> for para and for fecalysis, usually good. Most often than not, um, the sample or the egg of parasite that you will um, encounter is of Ascaris good. Re- re- very, very popular na to the point na you'll get tired of it <laughs> that you'll get used to it na parang ay, walang thrill, walang ibaw dyan parang it's always Ascaris, okay, fine, whatever I know, I know Ascaris already like, I need more, I need other parasites parang ganun, so it will it will reach that point, so yeah, that's why it's quite reasonable din naman for Belisario for Sir Belisario, the Belisario to say that Ascaris is the most common parasite helminth infection in the Philippines. No, so but for worldwide, nako press the buzzer. It's Enterobiasis or Enterobius vermicularis. Okay. Um, and the people that are usually affected are usually children that that is under 18, and also people who are taking care of these children that are infected, and people who are institu- institutionalized. When you say institutionalized, they are living in a closed encounter or a closed space institution. Example, mga daycare centers for for children, prison, yes, for prisoners, mga um, uh, Home for the aged, yes, and I forgot the term for that. Mga geriatric homes, yes. Uh, so those homes that are caring for the aged, yes. Because again, they are living closely together, no, or they are in close proximity with one another. Okay, so that's why they can be um, infected. Okay, all right, ayan. So that's for um, it's um, uh, people that it, that the worm can infect. Okay. All right. And again, the most common clinical manifestation or the most common clinical symptom is your itchy anal region. All right. Or also known as pruritus ani. Okay. <laughs> which results in restless sleep because, you know, think about it. It's too itchy. So you cannot sleep properly, which can also lead to restless sleep and even eventually insomnia. Okay. So because you cannot sleep properly, uh, you're, you're always itching because it's very itchy. <laughs> so I've not experienced it. Huh? You may be thinking, no, sir, how did you know na itchy? <laughs> okay, well, there have been cases, diba? There have, we have to be realistic naman, guys, no? Uh, <laughs> there have been times, Jude, na itchy atong butt, no? I mean, kinsa may walagi, kat- katulan o globot <laughs> It's There are times, good na itchy. But, when it comes to enterobiasis, the, it's, ang itchiness niya is continuous, like it's, really there, it's always there, but it's like successive, consecutive ang pag itchy. Oh, diba? So, sa ato, uh, sometimes when our butt becomes itchy, diba? it's just like spontaneous. Like, <laughs> one time, big time. Parang ganun. <laughs> one time, big time. Yun. But for, again, enterobiasis, the itchiness of the anal region is quite uh, is successive. Like, sunod-sunod siya. No? It, it's like really, really uh, intense. Like, you cannot um, sleep because of that. Okay? And because of the intense scratching, it can lead to uh, a secondary bacterial infection because... Um, the, the scratching is already intense because, again, of heavy infection, meaning there's a lot of eggs already there in your anal region uh, or in the anal region, which then led, which then leads to intense scratching. And when you scratch that region, of course, it gets irritated and even can get wounds, no, or can get wounded. So it can lead to a bacterial infection, no, because you're introducing a bacteria to the wounded part because of intense scratching. All right, so there could be a secondary bacterial infection to that. Okay, um, because again of irritation due to intense scratching of the anal area. But again, this occurs um, during heavy infection. So intense na ang eggs that can be found there or there's a lot of worms that the patient may have. Okay, all right. So that's just a brief introduction uh, regarding the disease. Okay, all right. Now we go now to the main culprit, okay, the main parasite that... Um, is causing this disease and that is your enterobius vermicularis um its old name is also known as oxy oxyuris vermicularis and that's why it's also called oxyuriasis uh, enterobiasis or oxyuriasis diba? that's why pinworm infection has those names okay they are derived from the name of the worm 
enter with vermicularis or its old name again oxyuris vermicularis okay and of course ayan common names as i've mentioned i have emphasized this i cannot emphasize this i cannot emphasize this much uh huh i cannot emphasize this um enough the i sorry uh, common names are a plus point. <laughs> plus points in sila sa board exams, sa exams, no? So it's very, very important that you memorize na lang yun. Memorize, or if not familiarize, the common names for each worm, okay? And for enterobius, it's your pinworm, okay? And, and aside from that, it's your seat worm, your social worm, and society worm. Seat worm because um, I think... Uh, uh, you also can get it from sitting. I'm not sure, ba? Or, or like, um, uh, yeah, when you sit. I forgot the, the why it's called seat worm then. Hmm. I think because, yeah, seat worm. Uh, from your seats, then I think you can get it from seats. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, ha? Okay, all right. And social worm and society worm, but then it itself because you can transmit the worms uh, to a lot of people, diba? So, that's why it's social worm and society worm. And again, as mentioned, most common helmet infection worldwide. So it's widespread in the society. So that's why it's called social worm or society worm. Okay, the infective stage is again embryonated egg. And the diagnostic stage is still embryonated egg. All right, so same infective stage and diagnostic stage. The mode of, trans uh, the mode of transmission is generally the main good is ingestion. Okay, ingestion of the embryonated egg. Okay, but rarely though, according to CDC, okay, I was thinking that it happens often. But rarely does inhalation and sexual transmission occur. Okay? Alright. And there's also what we call auto-infection. We say auto-infection, external. Because again, the of uh, the eggs found in your anal region. So when you scratch it, okay? So same patient, same patient. So when, it, when you scratch uh, the anal region and then, of course, some eggs will be trapped in the nails or in your hands. And then you don't, um, the patient doesn't, you know, wash their hands and then immediately puts their hands on their mouth, then of course, the infection goes back inside of his body. So that's why it's called auto-infection because the infection goes back to where it came from or to the patient, uh, but the origin is external, meaning uh, the eggs came from an external source. In this case, the anal region, okay? All right, so ayan. But again, the most, most uh, common root of or mode of transmission is the ingestion of the embryonated egg, all right? Okay, ayan. And the disease again is enterobiasis, oxyuriasis, or pinworm infection. And the symptoms again is pruritus ani or nocturnal pruritus ani. So when you say nocturnal, it happens during the night. Diba? So, may jud mo timing po ang bitok. <laughs> may jud mo timing ng kigwa no na um, sa mukatul pag yun ang imuhang luve or imuhang lubot or like your your anus becomes itchy during the night pa talaga uh, where you are about to sleep. So, <laughs> di ka niya papatulugan, parang ganun, okay? And <laughs> an intense um, infection can cause hemorrhagic colitis, so there can be bleeding in your colon, and extra-intestinal enterobiasis, so it can go to the vagina, uterus, and fallopian tube, especially if the patient is female. So, of course, diba, in your female anatomy, the anus is quite near to your vagina, and um, so, of course, it, the eggs can... Uh, transfer there no or can be introduced to the vagina and of course can reach the uterus and even worse uh, uh, the most the farthest is the fallopian tube so extra intestinal enterobiasis okay all right and the lab dx or laboratory diagnosis is five percent survival lang in stool so usually in stool specimens we cannot see enterobius eggs okay that is why we opt for another technique or another uh, diagnostic method and that is the perianal swab or the scotch tape swab that is why um the scotch tape swab is considered to be the gold standard Nako, press the buzzer you should take note of this Nako, sana naman, sana naman. please take note that again the gold standard for the diagnosis of enterobis vermicularis infection is the scotch tape swab again the one that we are doing uh, in the laboratory, the one, that, the activity that we are going to do, okay, in the laboratory. Again, the gold standard for the diagnosis of enterobis vermicularis infection is, ano nga yun? Dapat press the buzzer, your scotch tape swab. Okay. Alright. And treatment, you can use mebendazole, albendazole, or pyrantal pamoate. So again, the usual drugs for, an hel for a helminth infection, di ba mga Azol, Azol. Uh, azol, I sorry. <laughs> That's not a curse word, ha? Nako, sinasabi ko talaga. <laughs> okay. So, when th these drugs are um, prescribed, it should be given one dose initially and then another dose given after two weeks to prevent reinfection. 
by the adult worms that hatch from the eggs that were that weren't killed during the first treatment okay so two doses uh, two weeks apart so first dose and then after two weeks you get you give another dose so that again once I purpose a second dose to kill the worms that could have hatched from the eggs that were not killed uh, from the first treatment okay all right so that's the dosage for these drugs again these are all according to CDC okay all right now we go now to the egg the characteristic egg of your enterobus vermicularis again uh, it's described as elongated flattened on one side it's even described as football shaped and the most popular in the description is D shaped Ayan. so it shapes like a D or another some sources also described as described it as a, eh, what's happening <laughs> Nabubulol ako. but anyway described it as an Italian bread or baguette ova Ayan. so Italian bread or baguette ova so here are the pictures of your enterobius vermicularis eggs and this is an Italian bread uh, or baguette so Ayan, but as you can see it, it does look like naman no? <laughs> so as you can see again it 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 What's happening? Nakano ko na bubulol. I think someone's thinking of me. Charot lang. <laughs> Feeler. But anyway, alright. So, diba, as you can see, if you trace it, para siyang letter uh, D. Okay. Alright. Ayan. And again, you have um, quite flattened anina side and then um, elongated siya. Alright. And it's also shaped like a football. Alright. But again, it really resembles like the uh, letter D. Okay. And again, it also it is also described as an Italian bread or baguette ova. Okay, all right, and some sources will describe it as that. Okay, and aside from that, uh, it's double layered. Okay, it has an albu albuminous and the lipoidal layer. So the outer layer is, of course, the albuminous, and then the inner, if you can see it, this is the uh, lipoidal layer. It doesn't have a glycogen layer, um, uh, similar to your um, Ascaris egg, diba? because it does not need glycogen, okay, in its development. All right. Okay. What it needs is gas. It needs CO2. Okay. It needs gas. That's why your enterobus vermicularis uh, adults they reside in your large intestine or colon because we there's a lot of CO2 there. Okay. In our large intestine, so they need CO2. All right. Uh, the enterobus vermicularis. Okay. It's uh, embryonated, meaning inside of it is already a developing larva or a developing worm. And when it is deposited outside, it can be already infected within four to six hours. Ayan. So, diba, imagine, um, example, usually, uh, you'll know later, again, in the next slide, that the female enterobius um, worms, the adults rather, they lay their eggs usually at night, at 10 to 11 p.m., so at that night. So, uh, four to six so, 4 to 6 hours after laying or deposition, it will now become infective. So, um, so 15, so um, 3 a.m. to about mga 5 a.m., your eggs are already infective, diba? So, imagine your child, the child or the patient is scratching <laughs> the, 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 the area no? um, where the eggs are found. So, infective na siya during that time and you know sh the patient is scratching that absent mind and eyes absent mindedly kay uh, nag sleep pa siya no he or she is sleeping and then na disturb lang siya kay itchy so imagine diba so he or she doesn't know what's happening so it could really um uh pro progress to auto infection and also infecting others in the family okay all right <laughs> yeah so okay and it contains a Description as a tadpole-like embryo. So this is a picture of a tadpole. I don't know why. Asa ang tadpole da pita dere. I cannot imagine it. But this is uh, described no from Belisario pa in a book. Okay, so it contains a tadpole-like embryo. I think meron naman. I think based on this picture. No, it does look like a tadpole. I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Again, that's based on uh, Belisario. Kanin description. Tad tadpole-like embryo. Okay. All right. And um, next is it's resistant to disinfectants, ayan, but it can succumb to desiccation or drying in dry air. So, dili siya ganang mauga. Press me. Charot lang. <laughs> okay, chunk. Alright, so, um, yeah. So, it can um, resist disinfectants, okay? So, yeah, because maybe because of the albuminoid layer, diba? Um, but it can 
up dry. You know, it can dry up. Pwede siya mauga. Like me. Charot lang. For pila ka years. Sa joke lang. Okay. Alright. Ayan. Alright. And in moist conditions, yung basa-basa, it can remain viable for up to 13 days. Ayan. So, mas grandi na siya basa. Of course. Sino namang hindi. Charot. Okay. Alright. In moist conditions, remain viable for up to 13 days. Alright. So, this is the egg of Enterobus vermicularis. Now, there is this particular parasite. Nako, you're done you're done about with flagellates and amoeba. So, I think you already know this. There is this one parasite um that um harbors no or that that uh can be transmitted together with this enterobus vermicularis because this parasite resides or hijacks no or musulud siya ng egg the enterobus vermicularis kinsa da na parasite nako dapat preso buzzer na or sana na remember na kay i think humana mo flagellates and amoeba ni member nal so do you know kinsa ni siya this is your Di entamoeba fragilis. So I hope I hope na remember or I hope na discuss ni Ma'am Bernal. So again, di entamoeba. Okay. Di entamoeba. Okay. Di entamoeba fragilis. Diba? Okay. So I hope na discuss ni Ma'am Bernal and I'm sure na discuss ni niya. Uh, Dientamoeba fragilis. Okay, so Dientamoeba fragilis, by the name itself, no, you may be confused. Di amoeba, uh, the name of the parasite, Dientamoeba fragilis, has an amoeba in its name. But it's actually not an amoeba, but it's a flagellate, okay, based on studies of scientists. So it's a flagellate, but um, iyahang, uh, its appearance looks like an amoeba. So that's why parang it's called Dientamoeba. No, but it's a flagellate. Dientamoeba fragilis. Now, this parasite, again, um, it resides in a way or it can be transmitted together with the egg of your Enterobus vermicularis. It's part of the life cycle of Dientamoeba fragilis that it um, harbors inside the egg of your Enterobus vermicularis. So, pwede siyang musulo dito or it uses it as a habitat yata, if I'm not mistaken, um, ang egg sa Enterobus vermicularis uh, to which then facilitates its transmission of the Entamoeba fragilis. And aside from Enterobius um, egg, it can also use the egg of Ascaris. Okay, nako, press the buzzer. Lumalabas sa boards. Uh, lumalabas sa boards. Lumalabas sa exam ni Ma'am Bernal. Nako, nako, you should thank me. Charat lang. Okay. Nako, during my my third year exam ni Ma'am Bernal, ang, ang alam ko lang is Enterobius for the Entamoeba fragilis. And then, up to this day, no, I kept on um nag nagdumot chuka to guys <laughs> nag nagdumot chuka to na question dears kay i was thinking like how huh, where did this where did this come from i think sa notes enterobus lang giingon and then i discovered um that it it came from uh i read it first from Bailey and Scott's uh, diagnostic microbiology which is again another third year book uh, for microbiology so ano daw it can be transmitted the entamoeba fragilis can also be transmitted in uh in the eggs or can also be yeah using the eggs of Enterobius and Ascaris. Oh my gosh. Nako guys, please, please take note of that. Press the buzzer. Lumalabas sa exams ni Ma'am Bernal kung iya pang i-ask siya po na na question. Okay. Alright. Ayan. Ascaris and Enterobius for Dientamoeba fragilis. And usually, ang pag-question ni Ma'am Bernal Magudana is like katong same sa ako aba na like 1, uh, one Enterobius, 2 Ascaris, 3, ganun ganun. So, you have, you have to remember that. Okay. But, um, I think hindi na mo gawas sa exam ni Ma'am B. Alright. Basta nag-change na siya questions. Yes. Because Ma'am B is the best. Okay. Alright. So, uh, just take note of that. Dientamoeba fragilis, uh, again, a flagellate, it can harbor, it can use the eggs of Ascaris and Enterobius in its life cycle para maka-appeal siya transmit so that it will also be transmitted. Okay. It's part of its life cycle, I think. Yes. In a way. That's what I know. Alright. Okay. Alright. So, again, these are the eggs of your the appearance of the egg of Enterobus vermicularis. Uh, again, it's D-shaped, flattened on one side, elongated, and it also it is also described as a ta uh, Italian bread ova. And inside is a developing embryo that that resembles like that resembles a tadpole, so tadpole-like embryo. Okay, so that's for the egg. Now we go now for the adults. And so as you can see, these are the adults. This is the female and this is the male. So the female is much more uh, longer and much bigger. Uh, and then we have also here the adult. Um, uh, it's small, whitish, or brownish in color. And the anterior edge contains what we call a lateral wing or cephalic ali. Cephalic ali or cephalic ali. Okay, this one. This whitish, yes. Structure there. 
And the male, this one, it dies after copulation. Ayan, so, yung purpose. So, after nila mag-sex, after nila mag-reproduce, the male dies. Wow! Okay, di ba? Grabe! Nalamian, dagig intense, charot. Okay, so, yes, muna yung purpose. So, the male dies, okay? And the female, after being fertilized by a male, so, of course, it will then develop the eggs. It will now go to your perianal region of deposit, or meaning it deposits its eggs, and then also dies, uh, which then leads to auto infection. Okay, all right, ayan because the eggs can also diba, go outside and then whatever, so auto infection. All right, okay, ayan so diba, so both of them dies after they fulfill their roles. Okay, and the eggs will now uh, further or will now go further sa, sa life cycle. So, um, the female possesses a clear pointed tail that resembles a pinhead. That's why the other name or common name of your pinworm is, uh, of your Enterobis rumicularis is pinworm. Ayan. So, this is the pointed tail as you can see. So, it resembles a pinhead. So, para siyang uh, head ng pin. <laughs> well, Mark, yes, what I'm to describe. Head ng pin. So, you have a pin, example, uh, Basa pin, ayan. So, pin, diba? So, it resembles a pin head. Okay. So, that's why it's known as a pin worm. Okay. So, it has a sharp pointed tail. Okay. Alright. Ayan. So, females. So that's why, again, it's called pin worm. Alright. And the adults are found, again, as I mentioned, in the cecum and adjacent portions of the small and large intestines because, again, it needs carbon dioxide. It needs gas. That's why oxyuris, diba? And a single female, okay, one worm can lay up to 4,672 to 16,888 eggs, oh my gosh, per day. And the average is about 11,000 eggs per day. And imagine, imagine, per day, average, average is 11,000. And imagine if you have so many female worms inside your body. So how many eggs can it produce, diba? So it can even produce mga up to thousands and even millions of eggs, siguro, if you have a lot of worms, diba? So... Yes, so muna siyang, uh, if heavy infection jod, it can cause intense scratching, intense itchiness of the anal region, diba? So you cannot blame uh, the patient naman if mag-intense yun siya katol, diba? If katol mag yun siya, unsa man itong first um, uh, reflex action is, diba, to scratch it. Baka ibang katol na yan, charot lang, okay? Alright, okay, so, diba, imagine, single female, how many eggs? Too much, 4,000 to even 16,000, and the average is about 11,100. Five, diba? So, intense. Okay, alright. And again, this is an example of a gravid female. When you say gravid, again, it burros, no? It contains eggs. So, the black ones here are the eggs, okay? So, it's not quite clear. Then, this is the tail, diba? The pinhead tail, this one, pointed tail. And this is the eggs, the one that, um, the one that are black. Ayan, those are the eggs, okay? Alright, I'll try to re recover a video of a female egg, a female uh, pinworm egg adult laying eggs okay I, th I think i've seen it on facebook or sa youtube so i'll just yeah i'll i'll link to you i'll send you the link i'll tune link you guys okay all right i'll chun link you okay all right anyway okay so again we'll go now to the life cycle so the life cycle of enterobis is very very straightforward so again diba we'll start first with the female egg a female egg the female adult <laughs> lays eggs on the perianal region Okay, and the eggs, again, after four to six hours become mature, okay, and then the embryonated eggs are then ingested by your humans. Uh, usually, again, ingestion, ang most common route of transmission or mode of transmission, but rarely inhalation also can happen and also um, sexual transmission, okay, have been recorded, but rarely, okay. And your eggs also um, can um, uh, can attach, no, or can can. Uh, can attach on your linens, no, mga clothes also, linens, bed linens. So, um, so it's very, very likely then that the other members of your family can acquire the infection. Because let's say, especially if the family is poor, diba? Again, not to stereotype or something, uh, but let's say the family is sharing one bed, no, and one of the kid has enterobius infection. Now, let's say that. Um, the eggs will attach to the bed linens uh, where they sleep, okay? So, of course, and then uh, the bed linens will not be washed and all that. So, of course, the other members of the family can touch the bed linens, no? So, of course, um, they without if they don't wash their hands properly, then they get also ingested. They can ingest the eggs, which can then result to the infection of enterobius or enterobiasis. That's why if one member of the family has 
an enterobus infection, the rest of the members of the family should also be treated regardless if they have infection, they have the infection or not, okay? Because again, uh, it's uh, assumed, okay, that uh, if one of the family, again, one of the family members have the enterobus infection, the rest can also get it, okay? So again, uh, regardless if, again, the other family members have the enterobus infection or none, all of them are to be treated, okay, by, again, mebendazole, albendazole, or pyrantal pamoe, okay? All right. Ayan. So, again, that's the life cycle of enterobus vermicularis. Very, very straightforward and very um, simple, no? It's not that complicated compared to other parasites. All right, okay. Ayan. Now, we go now to the main procedure or lab procedure. Again, the gold standard, ako press the buzzer, gold standard for the diagnosis of enterobus vermicularis infection is your scotch tape swab. Okay. Now, the scotch tape swab is also known as your cellulose tape swab technique or your Graham Scotch Adhesive Tape Swab. And as I've mentioned, it's the gold standard for the diagnosis of enterobius infections. So a piece of transparent adhesive tape, your Scotch tape sa bahay, any Scotch tape will do, is pressed firmly against the perianal skin and the adhesive surface of the tape is spread on the glass slide. Ayan, so... Um, You'll understand more when I when there when we show the video on how to make a scotch tape swab. No, so yes, we'll have a video for that. So don't worry. Okay, so the adhesive tape of your um scotch tape, of course, will you will use that to um press on the perianal skin, <clears throat> okay, of the patient, and um the eggs will then stick to that, and then after the procedure, you then spread the adhesive portion of your tape to the glass slide. Okay, or on the glass slide. And then you examine the slide under the microscope. Um, yes, the slide is then placed under the microscope and observed for your characteristic eggs of enterobius, which are, again, the D-shaped, flattened on one side egg. Um, you can use or you can put a drop of toluene or xylol, okay, uh, which are, again, chemicals that may be used to clear the preparations. When you say clear, you remove other debris, um, other unwanted substances or artifacts found in the preparation that could hinder you in the examination of the uh, scotch tape swab. Okay, all right. And the specimen should be collected for three consecutive days. Ayan, consecutive three consecutive days at early in the morning before the patient has taken a bath or before they uh, or before the patient has washed the perineum. Perineum. And can also be obtained late at night at about 10 to 11 p.m. when the patient has already slept for several hours. Okay, so usually um, uh, during our time, you know, when we collect specimens for scotch tape swab, we do it early in the morning. So <laughs> we wake up really, really early, like mga 5 or 6. And then we go now to, of course, look pa rin, the go-to um, specimen site <laughs> char ng mga medtechs ng Suleiman, yes, uh, to get specimens, especially for para. Uh, mga five or six, yes, we go there na para to collect. Because again, we don't want that the patient has already taken a bath. Why? Because if they, ha they have already taken a bath, then it means that they have already washed the perianal region. And once they have already washed the perianal region, the eggs ha are not are not are no longer there. No, they cannot be found there. So th uh, the 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 performance, no of your scotch tape swab will will be a waste, okay? Because we cannot see any eggs anymore, all right? Okay, because they've already washed their perineum af uh, when they took a bath, okay? Uh, but if you cannot go there early in the morning, you can also go there late at night, but that would be much inconvenient for the patient because uh, he or she has already been sleeping and then you wake them up para lang to, to get the sample. Unless, siguro, if uh, the patient is your family member, then that would be convenient for you because you're living under the same household or what. So, yes. Okay, so again, two two ways. Uh, either early in the morning before the patient has taken a bath or washed the perineum or uh, late at night, around 10 to 11 p.m. Um, when the patient have already slept for several hours. Okay, all right. And to consider a negative um, infection for enterobius, there should be at least four to six consecutive the negative scotch tape uh, swab results. Okay, at least how much or how many? Four to six negative scotch tape uh, swab negative results for you to consider uh, negative enterobius infection or enterobiasis. Okay, all right. Ayan. And, but aside from um, enterobius eggs, you can also recover the eggs of Tania species and Shisosoma mansoni. Okay, because again, for Tania, um, the tapeworm, no? When the tapeworm, the adult tapeworm of Tania, uh, goes out it also goes out of your anus 
it can the proglottids can be pressed down on the walls of your anus and once these are pressed then it can also release the eggs okay because once it goes uh, again during um, when when the when the adult of tapeworm of tania goes out um, it can press it can be pressed the proglottids can be pressed against the wall of um, your anus and this leads now to the release of the eggs of tania that's why on the perianal region that's why it can also be detected in your scotch tape swab okay and again also also schistosoma mansoni okay all right Ayan. Now, for the pr principle, again, the adult female enterobius eggs, they migrate out of the anus at night and deposit their eggs over the perianal area. The eggs can be collected for examination using the cellophane tape procedure for, again, recovery of the said worm. Pinworm eggs, again, as mentioned, will adhere or will stick to the cellophane tape placed against the perianal folds. And the materials and reagents, very important. Uh, I put it in red no you have scotch tape tongue depressor and the toluene or xylol okay now we go on to the procedure the first one is we use or we get a strip of transparent scotch tape uh two to two to two and a half to three inches in length uh, and then we then wrap the gas slide no um around one end of the slide okay so uh the next thing is we then obtain a sample so basically the first procedure is you, you get a glass slide and then you wrap that with a scotch tape one layer long of scotch tape okay and then after you finish you then get the sticky side of the tape okay you open it or like you get okay the scotch tape uh, the sticky side and then um, but you don't like entirely remove the scotch tape um, sa, sa glass slide um, you will re you will leave again some of it stuck to the back of the slide okay only freeing again um, a part of the sticky side okay again you'll un understand this more when we so when we uh, have the video on how to make the scotch tape swab so don't worry guys okay all right then we carry the free tape over the end of the tongue depressor so we use a tongue depressor as a support okay so that the sticky side is out and then we hold the tape and slide against the tongue depressor so here's a picture this is the appearance so this is the slide no uh, this is the, the scotch tape and then this is the tongue depressor and then as you can see this is the scotch tape sticky side and then the tongue depressor so this is the tongue depressor with the sticky side and then the sticky side we then uh, use that again to the perianal region of the patient again to get the eggs of uh, enterobius and then afterwards we then uh, put the adhesive or the sticky side of the scotch tape now containing the eggs okay or coming from the patient back to the slide okay and then we then examine that okay all right again so again press the sticky surface onto the right and left perianal folds but again we do not insert <laughs> uh, because some of my students before in, in the in public health thought that we need to insert <laughs> the glass slide inside the rectum or inside the anus no that's, that's not the case okay <laughs> we don't insert the blade into the rectum and then we replace the tape onto the slide pull the tape pull tape back from the slide leaving a small portion attached and then we then add drop add a drop of toluene and replace this uh, the tape on the slide so toluene clears everything except the eggs and female adults under the lp of the microscope and then we smooth out with a piece of gauze which should be disinfected and discarded and then examine the eggs uh, examine again the preparation for the eggs and female adults under LPO and then as always as always remember that we wear PPE because again your infectious or your eggs are highly highly infectious so that's why when we collect samples um, like example when during during my time no when we collect samples it's we made sure good that we were wearing that we were wearing masks and gloves because imagine uh, no <laughs> like wala ka nag wear gloves and then you uh, or mask and then you are performing scotch tape swab what if you inhale diba that's one of the possible roots inhalation diba so very very important that you wear your ppe okay when we collect samples uh for scotch tape swab okay now for this procedure number seven or uh, yeah number seven uh we based on my experience we did not perform that no uh we did not add a silene or tolu uh, soilol or toluene uh, we just directly examine it. Uh, we just smooth it out, no, with a piece of gauze, and then examine it under the LPO and look for the characteristic eggs of Enterobius. Okay, all right. So that's basically the procedure. And there's a picture. Ayan. So this is the sticky side, and then the tongue depressor you use as a support, and then this is now the anus or the perianal region of the patient. And then we then again left and right sides. We then put the adhesive tape. Okay, and then 
uh, after after the procedure we then uh, put it back onto the slide and then we smooth it out using a gauze okay all right or we again add a drop of toluol uh, toluene or xylol okay all right and basically that's it diba? so as as i've mentioned <laughs> very short lang very short na lecture pero medyo 30 minutes din kasi marami akong chika but anyway all right i hope na get lang dears um for reporting of results again as always uh you will report as positive for enterobis vermicularis eggs or if negative non seen or no ova c okay all right so um yeah, you. I think you'll understand more. Again, as I've mentioned, you'll understand more the procedure on how to make the scotch tape swab when uh, we are able to provide you with a video on the laboratory demonstration or laboratory activity on how to make a scotch tape swab. It's very simple, no? And you'll also understand or you'll also get it immediately, I think. Okay, so carry lang siya. All right, so... So that's all again for our lecture on scotch tape swab. Very short, no? Very uh, short lang siya na handout, but long ang lecture match kay dagan kung chika sorry naman <laughs> but anyway i hope you understood no if you have any questions feel free to ask me again do not be shy na guys ayun na jumog ka ulaw kay hapit na mahuman ang semester karon pa mo maulaw oh, gosh no na okay mga friends na tayo dito shout out okay all right so again uh, feel free to chat me or chat sa atong group chat if you have any questions and again we're almost done all uh, i can count only na lang with my one hand the remaining activities in para so um gamay na lang yun, and we're almost done with the semester and i hope lang good that you that you learn something from me good that's my ultimate goal you already know that okay <laughs> all right so i hope i hope lang good all right i think you na lang naman i think okay so again thank you dears for watching and for listening again i hope you learned something and i'll see you in the next pre-recorded lecture i hope you have a great day and i hope you enjoy the yung screen break all right okay um and i hope you have a great day again dear keep safe and god bless okay